So in this video, we just wanted to show you just how easy it is to set up a ProLeaf controller and CO2 setup. It really is about as easy as it gets. Just plug your CO2 generating equipment into the ProLeaf, then plug the ProLeaf into a power socket and choose your settings. That's about all there is to it. You'll notice that the power cable comes with a two pin plug, that it also comes with a two pin socket for powering your CO2 equipment. We recommend using a two pin to three pin adapter to power the unit. And there are two main options when it comes to the CO2 itself. You can use a gas burner like the autopilot, or you can use a gas bottle and regulator. We refer to the different types as hot and cold CO2. Hot obviously being gas burning and cold being CO2 bottles. You wanna mount the unit at least eight feet away from any equipment that generates large levels of electrical noise and hang the sensor in the middle of the room using the supplied hanger. Note that it's not waterproof, so bear this in mind and make sure that you move it out of the way when you're administering foliar feeds or pest prevention. It comes with a built-in photo cell, so whenever you switch your lights off, the CO2 dosing will also switch off automatically. This is important because any CO2 administered during in dark periods of wasted since plants need the light energy from your grow lamp or the sun to make use of it. ProLeaf is designed to commence dosing the very second it becomes beneficial to do so. Next you'll need to choose your settings. The ProLeaf keeps it simple featuring only two knobs and a switch. Press the left dial and it'll bring up the PPM setting which defaults to a thousand PPM. For more info on choosing the right setting visit the one stop blog and we'll post the link below. A thousand PPM is actually a great starting point. Push the right dial to bring up the dead band setting. This setting decides how responsive the controller is to changes. The default is 50. This basically tells you how far the controller will allow the CO2 levels to deviate from your chosen setting before triggering the CO2 source to switch on. It works in the same way as the hysteresis setting that you'll find on many fan speed controllers. Think of it as responsiveness. Choose 50 and the controller will allow room levels to deviate by 50 ppm before dosing. Lastly, you'll need to set the switch in the bottom right hand corner to the correct setting. Choose PPM up if you're using a CO2 generator, which as I said before is classed as hot CO2. And choose fuzzy logic for CO2 cylinders. Make sure that you choose the correct setting. Fuzzy logic actually utilizes shorter bursts to stop the regulator attached to the bottle from freezing. So this is very important. There's also a third setting called PPM down, but this setting won't be used too often for indoor growing applications. As the name might suggest, it's more useful in situations where you need to reduce CO2 and not increase it. To find out more, visit onestopgrowshop.co.uk or come and see us in store.